Okay, um, welcome, guys, to, um, Pumpkin Jack. I am Brandon Carey, and this is a little indie game that, um, I decided to start playing about an hour, like two hours ago, and I've been really enamored with so far. Um, it's a little basic, admittedly, but... This kind of just scratches an itch that I've been wanting to scratch for like the an old school like kind of platformer. Uh, my friend Chris from the um, from the Dark Pictures series uh, recommended this to me, and I'm I'm kind of glad he did. Uh, the story here is basically that you are. Um, the fabled Jack of Lanterns. And, um, this town before we were summoned here was like an idyllic, uh, peaceful town until Satan got bored and threw monsters at it to spice things up a bit. Um, and the people want to stop him. So he's like, hey, I need a, a person who's smart and clever, and I have the soul of this con artist named Jack, so I want to send him to make sure that they don't they don't stop me and and don't and let and he keeps the monsters flowing. And so we are working for the devil to stop the the good wizard from saving the world by destroying the source of the monsters. It's a little inversion of a of a classic trope, but you know, those those are almost as par and parcel of the tropes themselves these days. But still, it's it's a funny, it's a cute little way uh way to uh to change up the typical hero's story. Hey, Chris. I, I am enjoying this, though, so far. This is a fun little romp through some 2 space. It is a little simple. As far as I can tell, like, there has been a whole lot of complicated motions that I have had to do or, like, challenges I've had to overcome. Everything's been relatively straightforward so far. Um, but it's fun. Let me see. Okay, I'm supposed to climb this, which means I'm... I'm assuming I have to climb up here. Yeah, it is definitely there's definitely a retro feel to this game. Oh, wow. how did I how did I hit the crouch? Why why am I crouching now? Oh, is it just because I'm Oh, it's cuz oh, that's that's automatic. Uh that's weird. Usually you'd have the player have to manually go slow in order to add the tension there. Uh, but it's kind of, it's weird, but oddly convenient that they slow you down for, slow you down so that you don't mess up it, or you just get a graphical glitch and have to do it again anyway. Uh, that's fine. It's no big deal. This definitely is reminding me a lot of medieval um, I can see why you'd say that, Chris. This has a similar tone to it, and that it's, it's taking these, like, horror tropes and making them kind of, like, in, in spoopifying them to be a little silly and, and, um, irreverent is probably the right word to use there. And that's a nice little, little touch, especially... This came out on Halloween and it's supposed to be kind of spooky. Because this was a, this this must have been built. Oh, I can't imagine how how quickly the studio would have had to come together to make this in time for the season. Because even a, a relatively like basic platformer like this. Oh, come on. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um. 
Like that doesn't just come out in the span of a weekend. Like there there is clearly some work that went into this. Oh, one guy. Still, that must have taken a while. Like he had you would, would have had to prepare this game to come out like at least a while like a while like probably like you don't just make a game you have the like there's a lot of work that goes into making it i can't imagine the schedule he must have kept to to kind of get this game out in time for halloween like or, or when he even started making it Like if he like I could, I could see the the, uh, the theoretical world in which like he started on October of 2019, and you know COVID's coming, so there's not much else to do with your spare time, so you make a video game to deal with the stress of being in COVID world. It's a fun little enemy where you have to use the crow to get an opening in, so you can. actually do damage and for those of you who aren't familiar with this game which is i presume most people who'd be watching aside from chris uh like uh, this crow familiar i have i can like use as a projectile weapon almost who are you you must go no further this place does not welcome you here's turn me away i am jack mercenary of devil himself you this morning, Jack, you're gonna leave willingly. You will be removed from here in a thousand pieces. Let's get us one back to the nearest bonfire. I mean, cauldron. So if that's the progress, then this must be optional stuff. Oh, yeah, here's the gramophone. Let's do a little dance. I like the, uh... This is a cool little dance. This is cute. This is a very Fortnite dance. I wonder if those do anything besides just be a collectible that you need to, to gather for 100% completion. Oh. Oh, oh! I almost uh, fell. That's pretty cute. So it looks like I just have to jump, oh, or just, you know, time it right. Okay, there we go. That that's the, that is the complication. Aside from staying on the barge, or on the rails. Huh. So you let them pass, or you just smash right into them head first like an idiot. Okay, so if you don't know what they do, then this probably is just a collectible for completion's sake, which is fine. Um, these games do tend to have those kinds of collectibles. Because I know the crow skulls that you collect, you can use to buy costumes like the one I'm wearing right now. There's a hundred... Looks like there's 120 skulls in the game, and you get and you need all of them to get all the costumes. All right, and nothing up here. No bird skulls. This doesn't seem like it'd be a Terry for the long game either. So like, I'm probably not gonna. Sh I'm not gonna like this. This little one-off will probably be all I stream of it. Cause I think I'll do the rest of my own time. Um, but I did want to, like, show this off, because this seemed, this, like, I've been playing for an hour or so prior to stream, and I've been having a good time, so I figured it'd be fun just to showcase it a little. Oh, I, uh, I am doing pretty poorly right now, but that's okay. That's still a win. Get my health back. There we go. Hey, 
handy glow in the skulls to know where they are. That does help. This feels like the kind of game that you could probably 100% complete in a weekend. But, you know, there, there probably need to be more of those kinds of games. Games that don't demand a lot of my time because they don't need that much time they just need long enough for, for me to digest them and then they i can move on like like it, it it is i can appreciate when a game does that when they when they understand that i don't want to be with them for an entire like month or two there are certainly games for that, but not all all the game, not all games need to be that. As the Avengers very very sorely learned the hard way, um, according to Square Enix's latest reports. I okay, I thought I fucked that up. But this is good, and I have tested it. Um, if I fail any, either any jump or any of the, the gate, the, um, wood destroying, if I mess up any of this, it's an instant kill. God, I think about the Avengers and I think about what that, like, that game could have been so great as, like, a 8 to 10 hour single player adventure. It didn't need to be stuffed to the brim with live service crap. And it and that would have probably been a better game overall. If it didn't feel the need. If it didn't feel the need to impress upon me um this live service obsession then I, I I probably I I imagine it probably would have sold better I was actually surprised when I heard that um it didn't sell well because I assumed the license probably the same way Square Enix assumed the license would just kind of carry it despite it looking like fairly mediocre as a game I I am surprised to find myself um to find myself wrong. Yeah, I, I have to assume that's what they thought when they designed the game. Or when they released the game. They thought that it just being Avengers would by itself sell a lot of copies. And I, I just, I guess they were wrong. And thankfully I was also wrong. Like, I, I like being wrong when, when the things I am assuming I'm right about are awful things. Like, you know, you always have those things where, man, I'm so glad I was incorrect here. That was me when I found that the Avengers didn't sell the way I thought it was going to. Feels almost, it feels kind of like an asshole thing to say that, but... I can't deny those feelings in my heart. And, uh... But... Ooh. Heed this second warning, Jack, for there will be no third. Turn back while you can. I have nothing to fear of you, ghost. For your sake, Jack, I hope that's true. This is cute. Uh, this game has a charm to it. That I didn't expect it to have. It's probably not the best platformer in the world, but it doesn't have to be. It like there there are room there is room for these kind of mid tier or even like independent platforming games. It's actually honestly it's been a long time since I've just seen a platformer. That's it's really rare. That's probably why I'm having a good time right now, because I I haven't, like, 
I mean, guys, that's not true. I did just recently play the new Crash game, which we will cover at some point in the uh, the stream series. But yeah, you don't get that kind of like mid tier, clearly budget game anymore. It's 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 pretty much all AAA or indie. And this is I know this is technically an indie game, but there is like that that really like B tier feel of it of like the game that was rushed out the door. And no, it's not the best, but it's solid. I'm, that sounds so mean. Cause this guy, is this is just a game. Like, if this is a, a one man team, truly that this man did a really good job. Cause I, I couldn't, I couldn't make a game like this, um, by myself. Not easily. That would take. That takes a lot of effort. Another puzzle. So this is a cool little mechanic um, where Jack separates his head from his body because his body is just like a, a, a shell, more or less, and not really important. And you can use his head to tackle small little puzzles. And so far, none of these have been particularly challenging, but again, I don't really have to be. I kind of wish we had more room for filler content these days. It's usually, there's so many things to do, like so many podcasts to listen to, TV shows to watch, games to play, books to read that it's hard to justify oh that's bad okay that's not too bad the time for these so what really helps is when a developer or a team understands that and doesn't bloat the game with dozens of hours of of content that doesn't really it doesn't really it's neither neither fun nor particularly helpful in conveying the kind of mood or atmosphere they want to tell like i get the impression that this game could be cleared fairly quickly judging by how many collectibles there are for the skins and i hope that is the case i hope very much so that is the case And I see why these platforms exist now, because they help us do this. It's very inter that's a very oh, smart use of geometry to make this puzzle doable. And switch here for convenience sake. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. We're good. And this line here also really helps me, because otherwise depth perception could be tricky here. In fact, I imagine that's what actually happened, is they re he realized depth perception was kind of hard here, so they put that line there to give you an idea of where you, of where the, the bomb was going to land. I expect that's what happened, because if I was in the middle designing a puzzle like that, that is probably the, the dirty solution that I would come to to make that easier because it is kind of like a dirty cheat like i say dirty in quotes because it, it's you can spend hundreds like you can spend tens of hours redesigning the entire level from scratch when you realize that that perception is a challenge or you can do a quick solution um by Throwing in that little glowy line and instantly solve the problem without having to dedicate hours of work to the solution. You do what you gotta do to get the game released at the timeline that you have set out for yourself.
And I don't fault the, the developer for doing that. Other things, this is this is the kind of game where if you don't put it out at around Halloween, you've basically missed your window. Because a lot of the charm comes from the fact that this is a, a very autumn game. Oh. Whoops. Sometimes you don't break things. Said no one ever who ever played video games. Always you go for the breaking things. They make you feel alive. That's another one of these little platforming sections. Okay, that's that's cute. Ride of the Valkyries is very appropriate. I like it. I can dig it. That's pretty funny. Ah, oh, funny, but it makes me smile. Which honestly, that's kind of what this game has been doing as a whole is like not making me chuckle or laugh, but just making me smile. Like a small, but very sincere, quiet smile. Of someone who has been made happy through some combination of charm and, I guess, some degree of nostalgia. Not just, not for this game specifically, but for this era of gaming. Because, you know... This is, to some degree, a dinosaur, but that's not bad. And again, I'm missing exactly three skulls. Okay, I guess it's boss fight time. I don't expect this to be particularly difficult because the last boss wasn't. When is he vulnerable? Okay, so the bombs are when he's vulnerable. But until then, looks like these minions are just kind of here to give me health. I guess they let me take more hits than I actually am taking. Because these minions, I can't understand why they would be here unless the designer thinks that I would need help or health spawning in. I also love that conventional weaponry doesn't work, but bombs do. That's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. And this is probably going to be Mario's rule of threes. I like that he's getting irritated. That's cute. Why won't you die? Why can't I kill you? It's because you're a boss. And that means you have a very specific and kind of silly weakness. As Nintendo would frequently tell me. We 
We did it. And now we can advance. Not mistaken, the mountain here is home to a tribe of powerful sorcerers. They must have left this tablet behind as the last testament. The Amulet of Final... Oh, I see. This is going to be where we accidentally save the world, isn't it? That's, this is cute. The sword, the sword's embarrassed at how badly you fought. Your friend. It's the good sorcerer. This is funny. Okay, this is a world of jerks. That's funny. I, I appreciate this. But I'll take that sword, though. And by my estimation, and I'm not sure how right I am. I'm going to switch my audio act. Well, fuck. God damn it. I'm such an idiot. You guys can hear a single word of this. Once this cutscene's over, I'll switch. I'll, I'll see if, if I can fix the audio. I am such a dumbass. Oh well. Let's see if that works. Oh, that actually works just fine. And now you should have audio. Let me test. I apologize, guys, but now the audio is working. Just in time for the third level of what looks like six. Okay, it looks like each level I get a, a new weapon. Though, so far, I haven't actually seen an effective difference between the weapons I've, I've gotten so far. All of them seem relatively the same. Or, in terms of effectiveness, it's just different flavors of of mashing the attack button. I guess that shockwave is pretty cool. That's new. I do like that the sword causes me to float over, over above the ground. That that's a cool little effect. I doubt it will matter much for platforming. But it's a cool little cosmetic change. I guess if that is a criticism of the game, is probably that, like, despite getting all these weapons, I, it feels like they shouldn't- they might not have even bothered, because there's not real difference between them. Nah. 
I love that Jack gives no fucks. Oh no, I skipped this. Okay, I'm glad I can just skip that. No one told me that there was no audio. Yeah, I had the audio coming out of my speaker as opposed to my, um, the usual channel that would lead to both my headset and the stream. I just didn't notice because I'm a, a fool. But, um, sorry about that. It happens. Alright. So I'm not going to escape not getting burned. Oh! Or I could just do that and totally escape getting burned. Neat. This looks like progress, which means there's probably something on the side of this. Okay, that is progress. So that means there's probably a collectible over yonder. Or salesman. If I had the money to buy a skin right now, I probably would. Sweatshop. That inspector skin is probably cool. I I wish you could actually see the skin before you bought it. But I guess that's part of the charm is buying the skin and then hoping and then seeing if it's a skin that you actually like. Oh, bummer. That didn't look like it was uh water or drowning water. I, I lo it looked like I hit it, but, you know, that's fine. It's actually probably better because it got me closer. Oh, that's a cool little attack. Yeah, if I had any, any criticism of the game, is that the weapons don't feel different enough to warrant getting more than one weapon. It, it feels more cosmetic than action, than anything else. Like, I, f I, I feel like even Darksiders, which is another one of those, like, B-tier games, when you get a new weapon, it does at least have a different property associated with it that you, that sh you can use in the next couple levels. Like, if there was a thing... That required me to use the sword for a, like a shockwave or something, or for like a ranged attack. That would be really cool. But as it stands, it, it does feel like a, like there's an opportunity there that has gone a little to waste. I can't be too mad because on some level, that's probably because they couldn't like the the time wasn't there for it. But it is something that is worth noting. Like if if he was given a chance to to make like a sequel to this game or uh, a new release of it, I I would hope that it would include more ways to use the tools at your disposal aside from just mashing uh, the attack button to defeat the enemy in front of you and occasionally hitting the dodge button to prevent- to, to avoid an attack. Hmm. I wonder if I could actually make that jump. But I don't see what I would get out of it. 
so I'm not gonna try. So that's a save point. It's worth seeing. Nothing over here. Okay. Oh, I see something over there. Could also probably do for more to have more um, combat music than just the one soundtrack. Like maybe each level should have its own variation of like regular platforming and combat. It's it, it it's. The skeleton is all here for this game, and pardon the, um, the joke, the unintentional joke I just made there, um, but it feels like, given another month or two and some polish, this game could, could also, like, just through subtle presentation quirks, just grow leagues better. It's not bad. But it could be better. And I say this like knowing... Like I say this because... Not not to hate on the game because I, I am genuinely enjoying myself. But it's one of those things that you can't help but notice that the difference between like a good platformer and a great platformer is by and large the presentation. Like even like not even necessarily the controls or... or the level design, but presentation goes a long way. You tricked the devil three times? I actually don't know the story of Jack O'Lantern. Like, I know the broad strokes, but not the details. I guess that's kind of a, like one of the stories that doesn't really have a whole lot of detail to it. It's mostly exists in the broad strokes. Is this a third dollar game, Chris? Yeah, I would say the content is is totally here. Um, there's just a lot of, like, small tweaks that could have gone a long way towards making it just that much, that much higher on the totem pole than it is. I do like what they're doing here, where it look it seems like um this this the crow is kind of the scaredy cat um player who wants to be cautious, whereas Jack himself is the I don't care, I'm just do it going through the motions kind of player. And you get both of those attitudes in the cutscenes. So that neither player feels like they're being misrepresented. Or unrepresented. Um. Yeah, I do agree with you, Chris. I think the content is totally here. But there's just a little bit of polish that would have been that much greater if it was here. Um, but the fact that it's not here does put a, like, somewhat ding the game. And the game is 30 bucks. I don't know if I would have actually spent 30 bucks on this game if I knew what it was going in. Um, I would probably pay 20, um, 20, probably closer to 15. I don't know if I would pay 30 bucks for this. Uh... And honestly, like, price does not 
indicate quality, but it is something that I like you do have to consider. For those of you don't who don't know, I I, I got this game um, thanks to Chris who, who gave it to me. Um, it's probably this is also probably why I'm playing because I don't know if I would have actually bought this game myself. But I was curious about it when I when I saw it. And honestly, I I'm glad I'm playing it because I'm having a good time. This is a fun game. I keep expecting these spectral platforms to disappear on me, but it looks like that's just set dressing and not really um, uh, indication of what the platform is going to do. Oh. Okay, so the purple light makes the platform a real boy? Alright, take care, Chris. Have a, have a good day. Or is it the spectral light just obscuring the reality? Oh. Whoops. This is... It's a game that I do not hate. But a game... That is just... It's so close to being there. But it's not quite there. I will say that the sword is, seems to be pretty good at ways because of its move set. Which does lend itself grasshopper. It does lend itself to wide arcs, which help keep the crowds under control. I am intrigued that the that breaking the lantern brings these sp spectral looking bridges into focus. I am wondering what that's supposed to say about this area and if that will become a relevant mechanic later on. Something tells me no, but I would be pleasantly surprised to see that it, it, it does actually become a relevant mechanic. Oh no, it's still spectral. It's just... That's a weird effect. I can't tell if that's on purpose or not. It is a little unsettling though. I won't deny that. This guy's gonna be the boss of this area, isn't he? Three, four, three years. This is cute. Plot contrivances. But that is kind of what platformers do. So... No reaction. That's okay, I didn't think there was going to be. Alright. Gotta collect the mushrooms. Like an 
missing something here. There's no way I can just jump that gap, right? Oh, okay. That's a little, that's a little variety. That's a nice little variety. I like it. I dig it. See, you don't see any skulls here, so... This is actually pretty cute. It's it's a nice variety. Um, and it adds some timing elements that the game does really sorely need. This is a good dif this is a good acceleration or or escalation of difficulty. Well, it probably could we could probably use even more strenuous tasks at this point, but this is something different than what I was getting before. Almost missed that one. Yeah, the game could probably use more of this in the early stage. And I meant that this is probably a platformer for kids. But I think kids could could do something a bit more challenging than this, because I was playing Crash 2 when I was a child. Uh, I, 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 my childhood me could handle this no problem, without even breaking a sweat. There's a puzzle, so let's see what the puzzle here is. Gotta use my head my pumpkin, as it happens to be. Jazz wings? Oh, because like jazz, like jazz hands. It's Simon Says. It's just Simon Says. Mushroom. I, uh, it wasn't a long hike, but I am glad that they let it, let us skip it. And now we can move on the next part of this area. Oh, was I supposed to actually drive it? Whoops. I expect this to be another... Okay, yeah, I just to actually drive this. Uh, this is basically, yeah, this is basically the, the same section as the last one, but there's not a dimension if I had to actually do a little bit of driving. Okay, so they are, they are escalating the stakes a little in the gameplay, level by level, which is nice. But you could probably accelerate faster than you are, and without losing much.
Well, I can't say, I, I can't deny that I actually, that I am enjoying myself, though, despite my criticisms of the game. Because I think this, the, everything the game needs to be a good game is here. It just needs a little bit of polishing and a little bit of tuning. This game is not bad, by any stretch. And the person, or people, who independently created this on their own, should be proud of themselves. It is not easy to make a game, like, even a game as, as simple as this. It's not easy to do that. So, the fact that they did it, and did it fairly well, um, should be commended. I appreciate the checkered flag. Ghost Rider, of course. Because every, um, every single one of these trophies has been, or achievements has been kind of like a, a, a reference to something. Which I can appreciate. I, as someone who enjoys references, I can, I can definitely, I'm definitely having a good time watching the trophies uh, come up in game. I want to hunt for secrets. I feel this combat is particularly hard, but I can't deny that occasionally some of the waves kick my ass because I, I don't feel like I, I feel like I'm not taking it seriously and therefore I'm taking more hits than I should if I was like really trying. to that skull so I can buy more costumes later probably gonna call it soon maybe when we get to the next checkpoint or two but I have definitely had a, a, um, a good time playing it thus far this has been a solid experience Sneaky, sneaky, creepy, creepy over this narrow beam. And then... I guess... You talk to you. That's cute. I, I do like video game logic sometimes. We all joke about it, but at the end of the day, we appreciate it. That's pretty cool. So this lets you go here, activate this, which gives you enough time to come back here and climb up before the mushroom goes away. That's pretty clever. That's pretty. Let's take a little twist. So they are adding. They are adding a bit more complexity. Not not a whole lot of complexity. Like this is this is still pretty. Like, this still falls around with pretty basic stuff. But this is this is good. This is good. Probably end when we get that 
gramophone over there. Or when we die. Jump, done. And jump, 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 done. Let's try one more time before we head out. Jump, 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 and done. And with that, I think we are done tonight's stream. Um, thank you guys for watching, and have a great day. Uh, on Sunday, we will start playing uh, Halo 2. And um, look forward to that. But until until then, uh, wear a mask, social distance, um, wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and all lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Uh, have a good day, and I will see you next time.